you have a, a, a specific connection to New Orleans? Big connection. <laughs> Big connection. How, how you get connected down there? And shout For one, being, 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 being a, Saint, a Saints fan. You know what I mean? Huh? For one, being, being a Saints fan. For two, Mar Mardi Gras. And for three, the music. Wow. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I, I have family living live, lives in Houston and shit. And periodically, I go, I, I will go visit them and then, you know, drive to New Orleans or fly to New Orleans or whatever, because it's a bit of a drive. Mm -hmm. And that's how, you know, I ended up meeting um, meeting the twins, you know, which are Magnolia legends. Mm -hmm. You know, these are Magnolia Project legends. Shout they shout them out. What's their name? Shadon and Kareem and Shadon, they also call them Magnolia Militia. They rap too. They just a little in retirement a little bit. But mm -hmm. you ever seen the movie Hood to Hood? Those the ghetto ass documentaries? Did yep. you ever see the New Orleans one? Yep, sure did. That's them, the twins. Oh, they own? Okay, gotcha. That's them. Uh, that and ma matter of fact, I actually got the okay from them. And the song that I did, I, I've been, I was promoting it for a little bit on my Instagram. The song that I did with Homie Fudge Juice called uh, What You Rap About. Mm -hmm. These motherfuckers make you laugh. But all that dumb shit they say up in they raps. I really think you little bus need to watch your mouth before you have some real goons waiting in front of your house. You got guns? Well, go and bring them things out. The homies that you say you wrote with us and bring them out. The click you say you're from, mess and y'all go bring them out. And we're gonna really see if y'all really about what y'all rap about. <laughs> and um, you know, the whole concept of that song, it got to the point where it was like, I need some real grimy shit at the end, you know, at the outro. Mm -hmm. And I ended up sampling the homies' um, interview from that DVD when they talking about you know all you know, all these all these New Orleans rappers talking about but busting your head and niggas in the hallways busting your fucking head, nigga. We do that shit. And the other homies like we ain't about no fucking rapping, nigga. We do that, you know what I mean? So I ended up using that as the outro and the fucking um, on the song. And shit. I'll, I'll send it to you so you can check it out. Yeah, let me. But um, you know that 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 was you know. But the connection to New Orleans it really started it started on some football and music shit, you know, because I'm a uh, I can I could possibly name every single rapper from New Orleans and their albums and all that shit before I can name every rapper from LA. You know, <laughs> to be honest. Damn. You know what I mean? Shout out to Meg to uh, Magnolia Levy. You know, the, 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 that's that's a good that's a good dude. This shit. Shout out that's to my dude. dog, man. Shout out to my dog, man. My bro, Magnolia Levy, man. That's my you know, bro. You know, you, know, you know what's crazy? Uh, well, once once upon a time, when because um, I was a fan of New Orleans rap before. Before um, Juvenile and um, and Cash Money in them, mm -hmm. you know, I was a fan of the UNLV days. The fucking um, this other dude called Dolomite, um, G Slim, mm -hmm. who else? Uh, Partisan Crime a little bit, but they were still bounce music. I don't really the I mean, bounce music is cool. No disrespect, but I, I was gangster back then though. It was much yeah. more. Yeah. With the Magnolia, nigga. With the Cali, yo, yeah, that, that was that was that was that was gangster bounce. You know what I mean? It was gangster bounce and shit. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I was a big fan. I was a big fan of all of that prior. So right. when uh, when Juvenile when Juvenile came out and he's talking about Noble Boy and he got the shit on his arms and shit, mm -hmm. me and my homies used to go as far as writing Noble Boys on our fucking arms and shit. Talking about we from we from the Magnolia. <laughs> <laughs> we from the Magnolia. We from Torrance and shit. We talking we from the Magnolia though. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when I met the homies and shit, you know what I mean? I met, I met them out there on some regular shit, you know what I mean? And this was during the MySpace days, and we fucking started following each other on MySpace, and they started coming out here, and whenever they came out here, I'll meet up with them and shit like that. I'll go out there, I'll meet up with them, and, you know, situation like that. So eventually, you know, like I said, a little, just little connection of the music and the, the music and the rap shit, I mean, the music and the football shit mm -hmm. turned into, like, actual friendship. So, you know, the homies already know. Whenever they come out here, they already know. They All they got to do is hit me up, you know what I mean? Right. All they gotta do is call me. I'll be there. Shit. If there's nothing going on that night, I'll make something happen that night. You know what I mean? We do We don't enjoy. We don't enjoy. You know what California and LA has to offer. Right. You know what I mean? But the artists and shit. Someone really needs to make a documentary about the actual. Not no fucking gangland shit. You know. Shout out. Like I said, shout out to Levy. Shout but I'm pretty sure that the, the, there could be a whole movie could be made about the original Hot Boys. You know what I mean? Yeah. And sure. The, the the homies and shit. The the homie um. You know, the, the twins, the Korean and Shadon and shit. Mm. Whenever I talk to him, and I try not to do it so much, mm. but I be asking hella fucking questions. <laughs> you know, I be asking hella fucking questions and shit. Hey, so you knew, so knew, you knew gangster, you knew fucking sterling and mosquito and shit. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? They'll, tell me, they'll, they'll, they'll share the stories with me. Uh -huh. But I'll, I'll try my best not to ask so much, though, because I don't want to sound like a fucking groupie or a fucking FBI agent. You know what I mean? Right, right. Hey, they don't, they, they, they don't. 
man, they, if they just understood like how, how we looked at them, the same way they probably looked at boys in the hood and menace of society. You looked at baller blocking. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it. it. it's the same concept. You know what I'm saying? So when we get of age and we can ask the questions we already we always wanted to ask and we meet people that knew these guys that we heard about in all this music, we want to know. But like you said, I can't ask you too many questions, man. You might get yeah. a pop or something, man. I'm just asking. Yeah. And, and these are people that I that I really consider like friends. These are my actual pops. These are my... Right. I shouted, I shouted them out on my Instagram talking about all oh, these are my daughter's uncles. Right. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you know, that's a powerful statement right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for me to know, because we've been out, we've been out here on some gangster shit. You know what I mean? We've been out there, I've been out there on some gangster shit. You know what I mean? I know these are, these are, these are really, they're really down with me. Right, right. You know what I mean? So I know I got that comfort level with them, but at the same time, like like you said, like I said, it's shit like, you don't want to do too much, you know, cause you start looking like a fucking FBI agent. Like, you already, right, nigga, you know what? Prank caller, prank caller. Don't call here no more. You know what I mean? Right. But, um, Soldier Slim, to me, how do I say this without sounding fucking like a group or gay? <laughs> He's a Tupac of New Orleans. So it was just Slim was somebody that I could relate to. Him and Turk, but Turk is a bitch. And I'll tell you why Turk is a bitch. There you go. Damn. Shout out to Levy, but Turk is a bitch. Wait, and I'll tell you this. Wait a minute. Hold on. Time out, man. I, what Turk do, man? I'm, I'll, I'm, tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll get into that right now. All right. So Slim, I bought Soldier Slim City by mistake. Mm-hmm. I wanted the true album. The the thing that was called the Goodfellas. The one with Hootie Who on it. What you bought? How you like me now, go T when I smile, trying to take me up and get up, but I'm still buck wild. Fuck the love, nigga. Fuck the love. Hootie Who. That's a sound for the killers. Yeah. Um, I, I, bought, I bought the Soldier Slim album by mistake. Mm-hmm. My my cousin and shit, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to the La, the, the La Muendo. Yeah, for sure. For a minute, the only shop that sold like rap CDs was owned by my cousin Head Eye. And the uh, and Swami? At the Dalama Swami. Okay. And you probably remember he was a heavy, heavy set dude. He lost a lot of weight now. But he was a heavy set dude. He was the only guy that had only the only spot where you could go and buy your CDs from your set, Dalama Wendor. Mm-hmm. And um, I went up there and I asked him, I want that fucking Hootie Who CD. And I don't think he knew what song I was talking about. But he was all there for New Orleans, you know, and Master P in them. So he went and grabbed like the first masterpiece that he could find probably, and it was they had to have it and be so just let him uh, give it to him raw. Uh huh. No, the first No Limit album, and that's this is 90, 98, 99. Mm-hmm. So he gave he gave me he gave me that CD and shit, and that's when CD players were damn near hundred bucks and shit, two hundred bucks sometimes and shit. Mm-hmm. And I had a cheap ass Kobe one and shit that I stole. Yeah, I stole that shit. <laughs> and I, I'm listening to that shit. I listened to the whole fucking album, and it wasn't no fucking hootie hoo on that fucking album. But I liked it. <laughs> right. And they had that song, Mama Pray for Your Baby. Uh, my mama, I love you because you made it. But pray for your baby because the ghetto got me crazy. Hey. And um, that song right there, because I was already getting to that point where I was already, you know what I mean? I was already off the porch like the like the NO food station. shit. Mm-hmm. And I was already a little, little slowly but surely getting ready to jump off that motherfucker and land on my stomach. You was there. Mm-hmm. I was already there. So listening to that song and shit early on was just, it hit me in the heart. Like, like this is this is entirely. Like, I'm sorry, mom, but this is me. You know, <laughs> this is this is who I am. This is who I'm gonna be. I already knew what the fuck I was gonna be at the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then all that bullshit happened with the homie and all that. That that, that told you in the past, in the past, in the, the yep. last uh, interview. The watch part of so, me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I, I connected. I connected with Soldier Slim right away. Mm-hmm. And whenever I used to go check for him, you know what I mean? Like you go to Warehouse Music and shit. When you go ask Warehouse Music, hey, uh, I want the new Juvenile CD, or is Juvenile coming out with a new album? Oh, Juvenile got another couple coming out, so and so. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can I, I want the new Soldier Slim album. Uh, I don't think it's coming out like anything right now since for he's in jail. So I'm like, oh shit. A couple years go by and shit. I happen to go up there again. Man, you got Soldier Slim. Oh yeah, you got a city called the streets, maybe. I want that shit. <laughs> so right. that little bit, I can I connected with his music more and more and more. And then there was one one specific line where he said, um, if it wasn't for incarceration, I would have been rich. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and that was one thing that I used to be able to, I was able to connect with, because if it wasn't for incarceration and drugs and shit, I would have been naked. You know, I had, like I said, I had plenty of opportunities to make it, but I was just a junkie. I was active. You know, DJ Quid wanted to sign me, but the homie that brought me to him 
the homie that brought me to him, mm-hmm. you know, told him, oh, yeah, this is my homie. I was telling him about the rap. He was like, oh, yeah. He was like, what's up, little homie? So you, you, still, you still in the streets? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. They're like, yeah, the homie really with the business. Blah, blah, blah. DJ Quick said, I can't fuck with you, bro. Turned to, yeah, he needed he need a real artist. You in the streets. Walks man. away. And I'm like, what the fuck? Kind of found out later, you know, a couple of years later, I got older. And I asked the homie, hey, what was up with that? He was like, he had just lost Mossberg. Mm. Mossberg had just died. So it was a situation where he invested so much money and time in Mossberg, he wasn't going to fuck with me. You know what I mean? R.I.P. Mossberg. R.I.P. Mossberg. Big time. You know, shout out to the only six million, his brother. You know, I, I heard I heard a couple good stories about Mossberg and shit. You know, I, I knew some people that actually knew him and he was he was that guy. Right. But also, he was a great dude from my ear and shit. So, you know, shit, I'm, connect, I'm connected with him. I'm connected to Mossberg to a lot of his family and friends and shit. So, you know, shout out to Mossberg. It would have been an honor to meet him, but we didn't get there. Right. What now? What 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 happened? What why you got an issue with Turk? For one, he's a bitch. And I'll tell you why. Mm. I bought his book. I bought it, I bought his book. I read it. And it was bullshit. Like what she would I don't recommend. I'm a I'm a book now. You know what I mean? I put it out there. I, I love reading. Right. I got a few books myself. Mm-hmm. Read, read up, uh, jump. If you, if you're a blues fan, uh, read jump the, uh, up, jump the devil by, uh, uh, it's about uh, uh, Robert Lee Johnson. Okay. Me and the devil in the crossroads. I'm gonna beat my woman till I'm satisfied. All that shit. Yeah, that one. He, uh, the devil, the devil man. They call him the devil's blue, the devil's blues man. Whatever they could have had a lot of names for them, but uh, that was a great book. Let me read that. If you haven't read it, I'll give you my copy. Okay, got you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm that kind, of, I'm that kind of person that. If I read a good book and I know you like books, I'll, I'll, I'll we'll, we'll swap books. So here, I'm with that. I appreciate you it. know read read also another book to read, and I gotta finish it and I gotta live by it, but I still haven't done it. It's uh, Eat to Live by Minister Farrakhan. I know? haven't even yeah. Everybody been they 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 that was on the list. I haven't even bought that one yet, bro. Like I got that. If you need it, I got you. Yeah, I have it. But, um, sure. Mm-hmm. But that, that's definitely something that um, I'm ready to turn muscle on to be honest, because <laughs> to be honest. Wait, you said Turk book was what made it was what made Turk's book not good? For when I, I'm guessing because um, I guess what we really what we but as fans really wanted to see and hear, he didn't get to that point. Everything was more about I used to do coke and heroin. I used to do coke and heroin. I he says I did coke and heroin about 20, 30, 40 fucking times in that book. I swear to God. Mm. Was, the, the story that he was bringing up, he didn't bring up any real, real cash money stories at all. A, a, as fans, we want to hear the cash money stories because I know you and Lil Wayne and BG fucking ran trains on females and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know you motherfuckers were fucking drug addicts and shit. And you, you, all you, all you, except for, except for you know, Juven, I mean, um, BG and Turk. I mean, BG and Wayne. But everybody was from the projects. So you got to have some fucking project horror stories. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Magnolia Shorty, rest in peace, was the one that helped, you know, helped him get that deal with cash money. See, he doesn't bring Magnolia Shorty up. So a- a- everybody that should have been in that fucking book, a- every story that should have been on that book right, wasn't baby. in that book. It was focused more on his fucking rehabilitation and drug abuse, you know what I mean? Which is commendable. Right. But at the end of the day, I don't want to hear that fucking bullshit. I want to hear about how UNBG met, how UN Wayne became best friends, or so you say. And um, that was that. That's that's how the conversation. You know, what I mean the the book. I just ended up reading it. I finished it from from book from phone from front end to end from the front to the end. So yeah. And I was very very disappointed. So you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I sent him a message on Instagram. Uh huh. And I said I was expecting more. I was I was I was expecting more from this book. But it was a good book, you know. And I gave him a thumbs up. And he said, oh, nigga, little nigga. He called me little nigga. Yeah. No, not a thing with little nigga. He called me little boy. Oh. He, he said, he said, little boy, learn, learn about how I became this man, not the man I used to be. And I'm like, you know what? He's a buster. That's what, that's what I learned from him. He's a buster. He read it, didn't respond, didn't block me, nothing. And I, just, I, was, like, I was like, fuck that book. Matter of fact, hold on. Let me let me go get that book real quick. Hold on. It's tragedy, man. I'm, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how mad I was. Right. This is Turk's book. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. The auto the auto of Turk. Right. 
when he said that shit, I threw that shit so fucking hard out the window, it broke my window. Look at, look at this shit. That's from how mad I got. Look at this shit. Why you get so mad, man? I'm a fan of, I was a fan of Turk. Man. And uh, another, another reason why, why, you know what I mean? I said, I, I, I related to Soldier Slim because of the whole what he said, you know, because he was really bucked about that life. Right. And that kind of stunned his, stunned his growth a little bit. Mm-hmm. Turk, I, I related to Turk. I always felt like I related to Turk because okay. he was a drug addict, like I was a drug addict. Mm-hmm. He had talent, but the drugs, you know, kept him away. Mm-hmm. Same, same as me. I could relate to him. Got you. Understood. I can't relate to Snoop Dogg because he was never in the street. I can't relate to Game because he's all make believe. I can relate to Turk. I can relate to Soldier Slim. You know what I mean? I can relate to them. Okay. So he, out, he, out, he, hearing, hearing this from a fucking shout uh, out Uncle uh, Snoop. I love Snoop. Snoop. Shout out Uncle Snoop, man. I love Snoop. Go ahead. Yeah. My, go ahead and finish it. My bad though. But shout, you know what I mean? Like, like at least see how fucked up this book is. I know I get what I, you're saying, man. You was a fan, you was just highly disappointed, in other words. Very disappointed. And I, I expected more, but I still I still said it was a good book. And he called me a little boy. You don't call me a little boy, motherfucker. I'm a grown man's fucking man. Right. I was already in my thirties with a with a child, you know. And fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, you see the you, you see the passion. <laughs> so, hey, so I'm how, telling you, how did that ahead. how did that song that new song y'all got? Now fuck that. I want to talk more about Turk. <laughs> my bad, my bad. No disrespect. Oh, Let me tell you this: what, why, why it got to the point that I said you're a bitch. That he's a bitch. Mm-hmm. I hit him up again and shit, and I, you know, I told him again and shit because I, I wanted, you know, when I was really trying to get back into music shit, I hit him up and I asked him, you know, how much for a verse. He, by, by that point, it was already like, yeah, it is what it is. I'm just a fucking disgruntled fan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, 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 I hit him up. I asked him and shit, how much for a verse? And he said, uh, 10000 but if you ain't got it, don't bother me. What? 10000 you're not worth 10000 I'll get a little win, 10000 and I'll wash all his cars for the next year and shit. He you're not worth 10000 Patman. Sorry. You're not worth 10000 Shout out to Levy. You might not like what I'm saying about it because Turkish people and shit. But shout out to Levy. But this is just me. You know what I mean? It's a disgruntled fucking fan. Right, right, right. So, uh, you know, these are all slaps in the face. They're all like straight spit in the face. <laughs> that he... Um- he he did a couple more things that I was just like, you know what, I'm, I ain't fucking with this guy no more. I, I don't fuck with him to begin with. He don't fuck with me to begin with anyway, so I, I ain't tripping. And one day, one particular day, he posted something on his Instagram that really ruffled my feathers as far as being a street dude. Mm-hmm. Talking shit about Birdman and shit about how nobody came and wished them us, you know, gave him condolences for fucking his dad dying and shit, you know what I mean? And even Juvenile fucking wasn't fucking with him and shit. Like he said, even, even he said he went to the club and seen Julie and tried to shake Julie's hand. Julie was like, nah, 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 get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, he was just, he did a long ass fucking live and fucking, you know, just talking shit nonstop. And he's talking about just being a little crybaby. And as a street dude and as a fan, I, I left a message on this shit talking about only like, you love these fools, but you hate them. You're following them around with cameras, trying to do videos while they trying to do videos and shit. Like, they can knock it off. Like, they either you love them or you hate them. Fuck off, they nuts. They don't fuck with you, you don't fuck with them. He blocked me. <laughs> <laughs> he blocked me. Yeah, you keep talking shit. Oh, so yeah, at that point, I was like, you know what? Like, at the end of the day, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm always going to be a Turk fan because, you know, like I said, you know, I always felt like I could relate to him. Right. But, at, but at this point in time in life, you know what I mean? I guess, you know, Insta- Instagram and shit, you know, all that shit will show you, you know, will, will show you that, you know, people's true colors. Either they're going to show you they're solid people or they're going to show you they're fucking cornballs. You know, before I had before I had my daughter, you know, I had a previous Instagram. Before I had my daughter, I was, tra- you know, that fly guy tragedy before the tragedy been fly. Tragedy and that particular Instagram, I was showing money off and shit. I was showing cars. I was showing guns and shit. You know, I'm in the hood. I'm over here fucking middle finger to the enemy's gang sign and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But once I had my daughter and I realized like I'm a cornball, like I'm a complete fucking I mean I I'm I'm, I'm wondering how many people laughed at me. Mm. You see nowadays the girl, I don't know how you call that growth, but then you look at my Instagram now, this is fucking 90% of my daughter. Right. You know what I mean? It's 90 90% her. You know what I mean? And it's one of them things and shit where I guess um, you know, I I just had to grow up. You know what I mean? I, I had to grow up 
And I think that's what hurt my feelings about this man and shit, because, you know, you would expect a fan like that. You know, I mean, he could have just said some shit like, ah, you know, it was too graphic or it would have been too boring. I would, you know, I, it's stories I, I already told, you know what I mean? They could have easily 